Hey, Mr. Clash here, and today we're going to have a look at Ragnar's six pack using this most deceptive army ever. Have a look at the troops down below before we get into this. Two archers, okay, they're for cleanup or something like that, obviously. 13 wizards, four healers, only four hogs, three golems, a clan castle. Mm, wonder what's in there. Two jump, a rage, and a heal. So as you look at this troop combo, you look at it and you think to yourself, how does this three star? It doesn't have 20 hogs. It doesn't have 20 balloons. It doesn't really have a lot of things. It's just got some golems and some wizards, apparently. And what's in the three in the uh, clan castle. However, it does three star very, very well and on a good variety of bases. So in this case, what we are looking at is we're looking at a queen walk down one side of the base. So the queen generally is not going to go in. She's going to start walking. Now, as opposed to other queen walk type of attacks where you're going to take, say, a minute of queen walking and then you launch the rest of the attack, nah. Once you get the funnel set and the queen looks like she's off and running, cool. That might only take 20 seconds and you're right to go. So you only need to get that initial little thing going and uh, get the queen on her way. Then the rest of the attack is going to be your golems doing a massive amount of tanking, wizards doing a good lot of cleaning up kind of stuff, and your clan castle and king jumping into the fray. Now, ideally, as you'll see here, the jumps are getting used to progress through the base and take out the expos, because the expos are going to be a threat wherever you go, because they shoot at you constantly. And of course, once you're into the core, so if you have a look here, once you get into this core, uh, if you're going to have bowlers in the clan castle, I'll spill the beans on that now, bowlers are in the clan castle. You can see once they're in here, they've got all of this next lot they can take out. So without further ado, gave you the rough idea. Uh, yes, the clan castle will be taken out. You've got two poisons for the clan castle. So instead of a poison and a skeleton, you're going to bring two poisons because if the queen's not going inside and maybe you lose a few wizards, it's harder to take out the clan castle, but with two poison, no problem. So let's have a look how he begins this one. Okay, we've got a golem going down first. So, like I said, the queen walk is not this major, major component. If you can start to get the little bit of a funnel happening first, so you're not going to spend a whole minute of an attack with a queen walk before you do anything else. So the queen walk's gone in. Now, both of the attacks you're going to see here were fresh hits, so nothing was really known about the base. What was in the clan castle wasn't known. As you can see, Troll Tesla wasn't known here either. So three golems are down on the field of battle. All of the wizards are down. You've got all of this cleared away here on the side already. Jump spells down. Now, I believe there's a big bomb or something there's probably going to take out some wizards. King's down. Notice that there is a little bit of a delay on the bowlers and the way that the bowlers were put to try and make sure that they're going to go into this area. Now, they will take out the uh, elixir store, the dark elixir store first, then they should be able to jump in, the wizard will go down, yep there we go, nothing left, bowlers will come in. Queen's still up, now the queen will aggro the king. Now one of the uh, considerations is can you survive the uh, enemy king without needing to use a special ability? If you can, that's fantastic, if you can't, look, you just have to use it. Do try and save the special ability of the queen if you can, but if you can't, look, you do have to use it because it's more important that the queen stays up. If the queen goes down, if she loses all her healers, bad pathing, things like that, then it's going to be really, really hard for her to continue on around the rest of the base if your inside troops take a little bit of a pummeling. So as you can see here, the bowlers are still up. Golems, still got a full strength golem. The king's going to go down. He's doing a little bit of a distract, distraction and the healers are still up. So you, your considerations, obviously, with something like this is uh, how are the air defences placed? Because now you can see the healers have left the queen and decided to heal the golem. So you, we have now got an immortal golem. Those cannons are shooting on that golem. So that will allow the bowlers and the queen and whatever else is around to slowly take out the rest of the weapons. The queen will eventually come over to the cannon and the wizard. You can see there are four hogs up the sleeve ready to, to do that back end sniping sort of a thing. There we go. Another big bomb. Obviously place there to take out a witch attack. And here we go. 
Got a little bit of a swag. Hogs coming across the base because we know that the Queen and the Bowlers will take out that Wizard. No problem. Hogs are coming in. A nice little three star. So it's a really deceptive troop combination. There we go. Have a look at it. As you look at the troop combo, you just think to yourself, how on earth did that three star? But I've seen uh, Ragnar do so many three stars with this attack. It's not funny. So let's go have a look at another one. Okay. So what you're going to see in this one is what I've, when I talk about these sorts of little moats, you've heard me talk about them before. And that is in a way that they help funnel troops in. Yes, they kind of keep a queen walk on the outside. So that if the queen's going to struggle to take the expo from the outside and bowlers can't bounce in from the outside over this sort of direction. But what it means is that this side of the base, you don't really have to worry about too much because there's nothing on the other side of the wall to draw bowlers away. So while the moat is there for a purpose, uh, one of the things that does do is it makes sure that bowlers aren't going to go wandering around. You just take a couple of these things out with a little whizzy or something like that. And then there's no reason for the bowlers to go wandering around. And uh, the only thing that would be a, a concern for the bowlers to go wandering around would be, say, a very high HP building like this town hall. But if you can get that down as well, uh, then that's not so much of an issue. So let's have a look at how this one goes. So you'll notice that this one is over and done with within a couple of minutes. So I've got the wizard going down at the bottom there and there's nothing there to shoot the wizard and the queen's down already. So just like in the previous attack, the queen was down. Now you can see that this air defense, this air defense and these are over here are not going to be a threat to the healers. The only threats that could be to the healers are black bombs. So here we go. Second golem's gone down. First one's over there. Second one's down here. So these wizards can begin to take out uh, the army camp third wizards go down over towards the king so we kind of need to be a little bit heavy on the wizards over this side because the town hall ultimately does need to go down i was a little bit surprised that the mortar did not trigger onto the golem but nevertheless it didn't and this town hall will go down so drop the extra wizard to try and make sure the town hall goes down king goes in early you notice the king was dropped over here so that it wouldn't aggro onto the town hall so dropped over here meant these things were closer it would take the jump spell and we've got the bowlers over here as well. Jump them over here so that they're going to be closer to the area. Okay, the wizards just perished through the big bomb. Queen's still up. Abilities not used. The golem tanked while the wizards took out the enemy king down on this side. And now that golem, and now it's a golemite, it's just going to slowly go around. King aggro, distracting the archers. Bowlers are taking in double bounce. And now we've got the queen walking around at the top. All the spells are used, obviously, to, into the uh, troops coming into the base. So you're not generally saving a rage for the queen. You can possibly sometimes, uh, it is depending on how things go, a rage can be saved for the queen. But generally, you're not going to be doing that because you want to rage the bowlers and get them right through the base quickly. So you're raging the bowlers into the base. You're healing the bowlers while they're in the base. And double jump is getting you deep into the base while the queen walks on one side and you've got some four little hogs for the back end so here we've got a, a, a swag ability and a swag hog, hog as well so try this i'll leave that combo up again for you to have a look at it's a very very deceptive combination troop combination you look at it and you don't think very much of it but just like you saw here uh, it just has a tremendous amount of power. So the things to keep in mind, we'll just play this as it runs through. Uh, the things to keep in mind are getting a funnel at both ends, really, but where you want to have the queen walk to, if there are air defences that are going to be targeting the queen's healers. So she will need to avoid those air defences. So if it looks like, oh, she wouldn't be able to, say, get this air defence here, then you wouldn't start her here and have her walk around because this one will just wipe out her healers, then the queen will be dead by around this corner. So you are considering the position of the air, fences, air defences in which way you want the queen to walk, and you are also considering the location that needed for the jump spells to get through the base and take out the enemy queen and the two expos if possible, and as you can see here, the enemy king on the outside taken out by uh, some bowlers. Okay, so while that plays on a little, what do I have is the question of the day. 
Okay, so now you know that once before I did ask you <laughs> the question, what was Bruce Lee, the, the fighter, the famous Bruce Lee, what did he drink? And the answer was, what Well, in this case, <laughs> we're not talking about Bruce Lee uh, per se. We're going to talk about Bruce Lee's vegetarian brother. Now, I know, I know you might not have known this. So the question of the day is, what is the name of Bruce Lee's vegetarian brother? What is the name of Bruce Lee's vegetarian brother? His name is Brocco. Brocco Lee. Broccoli. <laughs> anyway, that's it for today's video. Thanks for sticking around to, to the end. If you've tried this combo, do let me know if you've already tried it. If you haven't, do give it a try. It It is actually a, a pretty good combination to use. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And... I'll see you in the next video.